Hey guys, Ambience here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to beat Night 8, otherwise known as 420 mode, on Five Nights at Freddy's 4. This is basically just a harder version of Night 7 with few gameplay changes. However, due to the increased difficulty, a lot of timings and strategy dynamics change. Some of these tips can also be applied to Night 7, as there were a few things I didn't think of when making that guide. There are two main strategies for this night, and I've managed to get a winning run with both. The first strategy has you sit in the center of the room and wait until Foxy moves, then follow him across the room. I've covered this strategy extensively in previous guides, and I'll link my Night 7 guide in the cards above. If you want to use this strategy and don't know how, I highly recommend checking that out. I also wanted to correct a few things from my previous guides, as I found some good optimizations recently. I recommend only checking the bed after both doors instead of just one. You can get rid of the frettles very quickly, and this decreases the chances of Bonnie or Chica killing you by a significant amount. Another problem that many people experience on night 8 is closing a door, hearing footsteps, shining a light, and immediately getting jump scared. This is very frustrating, but thankfully there's an easy way to fix it. Whenever you go to a door, you'll be waiting for a maximum of 3 seconds to listen for breathing. If you hear breathing, close the door. If you hear footsteps within a second or two of closing the door, open the door and wait an extra second to listen for breathing. Sometimes, the animatronics will leave a door and come straight back to it because of their extremely high AI levels. They won't leave until you open and close the door again if this is the case. You can usually tell if this happened by how soon you hear footsteps after closing the door. If you hear footsteps while closing the door or as soon as it closed, it's very likely that this happened. Just open the door and wait a second or two. If you hear breathing, close the door. If you don't, use the flashlight. This takes a bit more time, but ensures that you'll never die to Bonnie or Chica in the halls. As I've already covered the other strategy in previous guides, I'll mainly be focusing on the one that I used in this run. These tips should be implemented into both strategies and help tremendously. For this strategy, you'll want to give up on fully tracking Foxy and move quickly from door to door with a consistent pattern. Your movement should be optimized as much as possible. Check the doors in a consistent pattern and never check the same door twice unless you hear Foxy run right up to one. In this case, it's best to keep him out of the room, and your speed should save you. When you return to the bedroom, you should be spam clicking to get to the next location as soon as possible. The obvious downside to this is that Foxy is much more likely to get into the room. A 1 to 2 a.m. Foxy is pretty common, and he will get in on most runs. With proper time management and a bit of RNG, you can survive with Foxy in the closet for the entire night. The upsides are that you have to spend less time clearing the bed, and you're not just idling in the room and allowing the frettles to accumulate quickly while tracking Foxy. This also makes it much more unlikely that Bonnie or Chica will get into the room. If you're good at moving quickly and aren't afraid to be in the hallways a lot, this is the strategy for you. Once Foxy gets in the room, your strategy changes a bit. You should now be checking the bed only after dealing with both doors and the closet. You can do either door, door, closet, bed, or door, closet, door, bed. You should deal with Foxy as soon as he gets in the room, so this will determine what your pattern is. Whatever it is, stick to it. Like I talked about in my Night 3 guide, the key here is to be quick without being reckless. Always take 3 seconds at the doors if you need to, and wait after opening the door if you suspect the animatronic came right back. Don't stress about the frettles, you can safely check both doors and the closet first. Foxy is more likely to kill you. Speaking of Foxy, whenever you run up to the closet, you shouldn't bother with the flashlight at all. As soon as you get there, close the door and hold it shut for 6 seconds, then run back to the center of the room and continue the pattern as normal. You should only be patient at the doors, and even then you want to keep moving as quickly as possible. This takes a bit of practice to get used to, especially if you like playing with a slower tempo. The strategy of tracking Foxy is possible, but in my opinion, no longer optimal. I recommend checking out my Night 3 guide if you want more tips on how to move quickly without rushing. The most important things to pay attention to here are that you're waiting for enough time at the doors and dealing with fakeouts, that you're holding the closet shut for 6 seconds consistently, and that you're not spending too much time on the bed. And of course, a consistent pattern and fast movement are essential. This strategy may sound counterintuitive, but it really does work and is also great practice for challenges like InstaFoxy. That's pretty much everything you need to know for this segment, now let's move on to the 4 to 6 a.m. segment. Nightmare is an absolute pain on this mode, and no one seems to understand how he works. First, some changes you'll have to make from Night 7. Nightmare is extremely unforgiving on this mode, and there's a lot of reports of people getting killed through doors for seemingly no reason. There actually is a reason for this, and it's that you're not fast enough. This is one of the reasons why I switched to this new 12-4am to strategy, is because I wanted to train my movement optimization for this segment. 
First of all, you'll no longer be waiting a second or two after Nightmare stops. As soon as you hear his footsteps stop, run to the door. Make sure his footsteps actually did stop. As soon as you don't hear them anymore, he cannot run to the other side. As soon as you get there, close the door. Shiny the light wastes a fraction of a second, and sometimes that's too much. Once Nightmare stops, he either arrives at the door in a second or half a second. If it's the latter, the tiniest slip up will spell death. The instant you hear him run away from the door, retreat back to the center of the room and wait for him to stop again. Repeat the pattern until you hear a laugh, which is where it gets tricky. If you suspect a fake laugh, run up to the door you last heard him at and shine the flashlight. If he's there, close the door. If he's not, run back to the center and check the bed. If he's not there either, spam click the closet and hope you can close it in time. Don't shine the light or hesitate at all. If you're lucky, you might still be able to clutch it. Unlike Night 7, you only want to shine the light if you recently heard Nightmare laugh and need to tell if it's real or fake. Otherwise, it wastes precious time. To recap, don't shine the light at doors unless you heard Nightmare laugh. If he's not there, immediately double back and check the bed and closet in that order. As soon as you hear Nightmare stop, run to a door. Don't run to one prematurely, but don't wait a few seconds after he stops. As soon as you hear footsteps running away from the door, go back to the center. Be prepared to run to the opposite door immediately if Nightmare stops there. Well, that's all for now. Night 8 contains a decent amount of RNG with Foxy and Nightmare, but it really isn't that bad after practicing and understanding how everything works. You can use either of the strategies that I mentioned, but I recommend the faster paced one. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join my community Discord server, which is linked in the description. With that being said, thank you guys for watching this guide. I hope it helped you, and I will see you in the next one.